Welcome to Untold Stories of Innovation, where we amplify untold stories of insight, impact, and innovation. Powered by Untold Content, I'm your host, Katie Trout Taylor. Our guest today is Mike Reynolds. He is CEO of Innovate Map. He leads a team of experts in digital product research, branding, marketing, and design who've helped over 150 clients dream, design, and scale more marketable, valuable, and usable products. I'm so thrilled to talk to you today, Mike, about storytelling, especially with regard to product design. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. And boiler up. That's right. By the way, I like that. Yeah. I did my, yeah, I did my, my graduate studies at Purdue and I see that you were a fellow Boilermaker. Yep. Always a Boilermaker. It's great. Shout out to anyone listening uh, (laughs) who knows what we're talking about. (laughs) So, so Mike, I would love, could you give me a little bit more? I've been following Innovate Map. Our team at Untold is, is really thrilled about researching and seeing some of the work that you do, but could you give us from your perspective, what types of work do you do at Innovate Map specifically with regard to innovation? Yeah, it's great. So real quickly, we describe ourselves as a digital, digital product agency and uh, just unpack the digital product word. Uh, very focused uh, specifically on applications, uh, SaaS software, uh, any tor- type of portal, e-commerce, anything that's basically digitized Our team is going to be uh, partnering with either the founder or the leadership team behind it and really complement them with core skills of strategy and design. So kind of our value prop is you're going to build the right thing and it's going to resonate with a buyer and resonate with a user. And uh, kind of the way we get that done internally on our end is we've got seasoned product managers and product designers that are going to get the uh, digital component of it right in terms of the actual product. Uh, and, like, and then we've got a team of branders and product marketers who are going to help tell that story well uh, internally and then eventually to the target market. Uh, and Beautiful. so, yep. Yeah. So let's dig in specifically to storytelling mm-hmm. and the way that it shows up. Um, it, you kind of framed it. This is something I hear a lot on the podcast that s- most organizations sort of have technical R and D innovation folks alongside marketing, branding, commercial folks. Is that how you structure it too? Where it's it's um, they technically it's technically people wearing those different hats, but they're collaborating together. Yeah, and it's funny we we're exclusively. Um, the strategy and design uh, competencies. And we will partner with the, like I said, the the idea, whether it's a founder or whether that's a leader in a a larger organization and their technology team of choice. Uh, And that it's funny, um, by design since day one, I think that we have found that people know that with any of these digital ideas, they need it coded. Um, But what I I guess we found and kind of was even the inception of the company was uh, what was really going to differentiate that product isn't just that it's well-built. Uh, they're going to lean on that technology team for things like, is it architected well, stable, scalable, integratable? But what's really going to set that product apart is, you know, is it marketable? Is it something that's going to resonate with its market? Is it valuable? Is it solving the stories and the user problems that it intended to? And then is it usable itself? And that's not typically what the engineers are focused on. And so we will co- we will come to the table uh, to complement this that that very core and fundamental differentiator uh, with that. So I do see the separation of roles and I'm, I'm starting to see where that's, that's almost like, Hey, this group technology group be very much focused on, you know, are, are we building the thing right? While well, this group's very much focused on, are we building the right thing? And, uh, the right thing certainly, certainly originated in leveraging storytelling throughout. So that's kind of where we'll, we'll, our value will really come into play. Yep. That makes a lot of sense. So I'd love to hear from your perspective, after working with all of these innovation teams, what is the role and the power of storytelling, especially as you're trying to, as you said, make sure that you're building the right thing? Yeah, my mind goes to several places, honestly, um, in that phase. Like, for, for, starter, for starters, it, uh, I believe the storytelling is even, even essential to describing the problem to be solved. Like, even before you've even gotten to the idea. Like, what's, it's not, it's not a... Uh, you know, I, I think a lot of uh, digital ideas that don't even have a, a unique workflow or user story that they're even solving. So I would say even just from origin of idea, uh, understand the story uh, that you're trying to solve is very important. But I, I would say, should someone have a vision, whether that started, uh, you know, solving a problem or whether you were had a vision of something of a problem to be solved? 
it is paramount to convey that vision. I don't understand how, I, I was, the better way of putting it is I don't, I see the most successful uh, visionaries uh, both get buy-in uh, and followership by conveying that vision with stories uh, versus focusing immediately on the nuts and bolts of their idea um, and certainly not the science of their idea. Uh, and I'll, I'll kind of unpack the two. I mean, followership is you're going to have to, you know, if, if you, certainly if you're a startup tech or even if you're in an, you know, an uh, entrepreneurial er or innovation area of a, of, a, of a company, people are going to have to buy into your vision. And, um, you know, kind of explaining that with storytelling is is what I have found being, being the most engaging way to get people behind your idea. And then the other one being just, you know, just getting a stakeholder, whether that be, you know, pitching your idea to uh, venture capital or pitching that idea internally to get uh, internal budget support. Uh, once again, I'm finding most of the most successful uh, entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs are doing so in a way that's telling a story. Uh, the, the best pitch decks or the best internal socialization decks I've seen are using a story. And that, that's really just even describing the value of it in an onset of an idea. I'm certainly there's there's more I could go into, or at least what we see, you know, as the idea is, is be built or being launched and so forth. But that, to me, it starts right from the get-go. Yes, right at that ideation moment, setting up the the, the vision for what should happen. Uh, and, and that really, that story seems most effective when it's strategically aligned, you know, aligned with the brand, the organization, ideally even the entire innovation ecosystem, whether that's what your industry is most striving to achieve for the future, whether that's your sort of regional or city level rallying cry, yep. um, but definitely too at that individual level, I, I love how you said it, that storytelling can increase your followership, and we you know we use the term championship a lot in innovation. Uh, it, it's reminding me specifically of there are some new studies coming out around the one key performance indicator that innovation leaders should be tracking is employee engagement. And one of the things we're fascinated by, and I, I hope we can conduct a research study on this, is does effective storytelling, especially at the start, the way that you're describing it, does it increase employee or innovator engagement, motivation, followership, however you want to phrase it? Um, and then what kind of ROI does that generate for the, for the innovation process overall? Yeah, it's great. I, I'll, I'll take two quick thoughts that come to mind on that. Is one, it's it's certainly essential. Buy-in is a, I mean, for many, especially even if if, if you're a, if it's a startup entrepreneur, buy-in is literally building your team. <laughs> so it's essential. Yes. <laughs> um, but I, yes. I actually have found that it actually makes the innovation better. And let me kind of give you an example. Of what I mean, if, if the founder or the, or the leader, I can, I'm using those interchangeably. A leader might just be someone in a you know, an, uh, an innovation team or with a larger company, if they simply just describe the idea, you know, hey, I need to go build this with X, Y, and Z. Um, first of all, that's interesting, but not overly compelling. But also, it, it, it's almost like that the innovation is limited to to that versus, hey, I, I see this problem yes. in the market. Um, these individuals are experiencing this pain. I have a solution that I think that if you just start painting the picture and people are kind of bought into the actual story and using storytelling, what you're not only going to find is the idea is not solely beholden to the, uh, to the originator of the idea. Other people can participate then in the ideation because they have a better comprehension of what's going down. You know, and, and I've seen this where it's like the founder is the only one that has the idea and it's the only, and they're only describing it probably poorly what's in their head. But if they can kind of unpack that with storytelling or kind of describing much more of a user workflow or use case model, others can participate and say, Hey, I get that pain too. Did you think about what about and so forth? That additional input we've just seen be, just really strengthens the overall solution. So I actually believe the idea is better if you can get people brought into uh, what's actually going down or what's happening with the, with the, uh, with the innovation. Yes, absolutely. It makes so much sense. I, I'd love to hear, do you have any stories you can share uh, or sometimes we call them at untold epic examples of, uh, uh, you know, it, it could even be small moments where you heard an internal client or leader that you are working with articulate a problem in a way that you just, we watched the people in the room sort of light on fire. Yeah. Right? I, want I get it. 
Yeah, I, I would say it comes to mind very often when some specifically or the easiest one, I should say, is when someone comes to us uh, and their idea is a consumer idea. And and the reason that we can connect immediately to that, because I'm a consumer myself, you know, if it's if their innovation is solving, you know, maybe a very highly special a problem in a very highly specialized business domain, um, you know, you want to get up to speed on that domain before you really have an ability to contribute. But I, I'll, I'll share one, which was, you know, uh, we had a wonderful founder. Her name was Carrie Griffith, and she had a application called Little Nugget. Uh, has it, I should say. You know, came to us, and it was, it was, um, you know, if she would have simply described it as, I've got an app for new moms to, you know, capture their their baby memories. Just give me that. That that that's that's like I said, interesting. But when she really starts to tell her story. Um, about her herself and her mom experience and the pains that she felt and the, you know, the angst of, of, uh, you know, not being able to capture these and, and not be able to capture them well and no means for that and uh, memories being lost. And that has influenced an app design and, uh, uh, you know, and she starts to go into the features of the app with, with how those meant so much to her personally, just a different level. It's just a different level. Yeah. And, you know, and I, I, and that, that one came to mind very quickly in particular. I'm a, I'm a, father of children as well. And I, I can immediately uh, connect with and resonate with the pain and I'm bought in immediately. Uh, not because they simply have an app idea, but because I understand the story and the origin behind the problem they're trying to solve with technology. It's a very different, uh, like I said, in that instance, if I, if you kind of go back to the original things we were talking about, I'm, I'm a stakeholder or I'm a, I'm an audience in that, in that, in that moment. And, you know, she very rapidly was able to get me to comprehend, buy in and, um, you know, and, and, and do so and, and totally did so in a way of, 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 by, you know, sharing real experiences and telling it in a story format. It's beautiful. It, it's so obvious that the consumer needs to know that story. The investor needs to know that story. If that's an entrepreneurship example, leadership and other organizational stakeholders need to hear it. I would love to, I, I guess I, in this episode, I'm just dreaming about research studies that we should do together, Mike. That's what yeah. I'm doing. <laughs> but it, it, you know, in my dream world, we would research whether when an engineer or a technologist is, is told the innovation, you know, is given their technical brief through story, it would be so interesting to see if that changes anything about the way that they innovate against that problem and, and build the features and that sort of thing. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. And I think, you know, I, I, we, we use a uh, housing analogies a lot of times for what we do, you know, like we, you know, and uh, you know, cause just simply because they're strategic or they're, they're outcome minded they're business led and they're design led. And I, I couldn't imagine if someone just went to, said, I'm building a house two by fours, <laughs> yeah. starting just spewing out measurements versus, you know, the, Hey, I'm building a house. I intend to live in forever. I've got, you know, this level, this age of children, and this is how they play and how they work. You immediately, even just in the 10 seconds I was sharing it, can start to paint a picture in your head of what maybe the right product or innovation would be. You know I mean, versus being limit, immediately limited to the implementation of it. So uh, true. It, yeah. And it's resonating to me too. Everything we know about design led innovation, about user experience, um, uh, all of those best practices really one of the major differences is the use of storytelling compared to maybe traditional ways of, of developing technology based on requirements and features. Yeah. And it's funny. So, um, you know, I would say in this day and age, if you're not, the majority um, of digital products are, are, are done in a much more agile fashion than waterfall. And, you know, and it, with that, you know, so the production of the digital products, you're, you're literally the best practice moving forward is, there are no such things as requirements. Um, it's user stories. You know, you, people are building off user stories, not building off hard technical requirements. Um, mm. Now, it's certainly just to kind of, that that's literally how it's done. Now, the hard technical requirements come into play, but they come into play after the story. So if you're kind of conveying, you know, the desired product, even in the, the depths of uh, how it's being built, uh, the stakeholders, the product people, uh, the business analysts, they're, the best practice nowadays is to craft those in user stories and those will translate into technical requirements, but um, the better products are being led that way. Uh, and, and certainly, um, you know, and I, 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 to me, that's a fascinating one where I say that like in the, in our world, at least there is no such thing uh, as a requirement. 
uh, it's a user story. And that's actually mm-hmm. what drives the you know, internal processes to actually even get that built. Yes, absolutely. It's it's so cool. One of the things that we've been doing at Untold lately is we've spent the last year asking thought leaders like yourself and innovation leaders like yourself, why does storytelling matter to innovation? And we never heard a single person say, it doesn't. <laughs> uh, right. And so at this point, we've been shifting over the last several months to really focus on how. How is it done well? How can you train innovators to do this more effectively? Leaders to do it, technologists, engineers, and of course, commercial folks already have some training usually. But what's the role across the entire process from ideation to market launch? And how do you empower people to do it well? And and what are sort of these like validated or vetted tools for doing that? And two things you've already mentioned. Um... We, we recently sort of mapped at Untold as we're building this sort of toolkit of, of uh, strategies. And it's one of the things that, that we are identifying for this toolkit is innovation story patterns. So what are those storylines and plot lines that we hear over and over to the point where we expect to hear them in specific innovation contexts? So you mentioned one that we've, we call the, the origin story, sharing the origin in your story about Little Nugget. Uh, sharing the origin is that plot line where we sort of hear how an idea was formed, why it mattered on a personal level to the team or the individual who came up with it, and how, that, and how you can use that plot line to really connect deeply mm-hmm. on a personal level. And the second one you were just talking about, um, you know, gathering user stories as part, especially of the design sprint or the, or the innovation, that part of your stage gate, mining for insights is what we call that story pattern where these are low fidelity narratives. They are pithy, but deep insights into what a person feels or experiences. Um, and in a way that those stories are then always utilized to help innovators build the requirements or build, you know, the, the solutions around. So mining for insights and then sharing the origin are two patterns that we're hearing a lot. And we're starting to sort of document these patterns and build this toolkit so that people can really be empowered and trained to observe this and hear it, you know, rhetorically in their ears, be able to listen, um, and, and know when, when and how these 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 story patterns are, are are used across the innovation process? Yeah, it's great, and I I mean we t- totally philosophically aligned with like what we see, and uh, honestly, at the end of the day, I think it's building a better product. I mean, it's better the innovation will be better. I can't. It's 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 funny for me to think about, and you know, my career I've been in digital products over twenty years. Um, you know, with the first ten years, certainly being in like installable client server software where you were literally guessing. Um, <laughs> you know, you're going to, you're going to build something and hopefully get feedback later. And, uh, and if I think about just how this has revolutionized better innovation, that it's being influenced by actual user stories and usage and insights and feedback, the product is just better. And, um, you know, versus, uh, Hey, we built this. Does anybody want it? Is this, did we get it right? Um, <laughs> you can, yes. you can minimize that risk much earlier in the process. Yes, yes, yes. So true. Awesome. So I I would love to hear, you know, you, you seem to have this incredible team that are highly motivated. And and I would just love to hear some more stories about um, some of the innovation projects that you've worked on, the way story has showed up within those processes. Yeah. And and probably I'll be very honest, the biggest thing we're seeing now is really that, I mean, you kind of, we talked about origin of the idea you know, get buy and get a socialization. And then you almost assume when it's funded, now you, you're leveraging it in the insightful area of like where you're breaking down features and getting it developed. Where we're seeing it off the charts right now is in the outbound and launch. Um, yes. and, and I would say that, that I'll be very candid, that probably represents almost half, or probably half of our business, which is, uh, you can translate to it half, half the time our clients are asking us for help. And it's, they built something that they feel is, is well, but now they got to bring it to market and sell it. You know, and um, there is no better way to convey the value of the product to to a target market, to a buyer, than using the storytelling as well. I mean, gone are the days where I think the product sells itself simply based on how well it's engineered. You know, I very rarely are we seeing successful products sold just by geeking out on the 
on the technology. It's almost almost an expectation that it's well built. Um, yes. And and I, we're finding the best sales enablement tools, uh, the best marketing approach. Uh, those are being equipped with uh, you know exceptional product marketing. And that product marketing is really describing the features or describing the product's value or the innovation's value totally in stories and um, imperative for highly technical products, by the way. Uh, You can kind of picture a couple examples. We get a lot of these examples as well. It could be innovation in the highly technical space like data analytics or IoT, Internet things, um, or cybersecurity. Um, You know, if if someone's described your innovation there. you're going to be most effective by describing the problem it solves and telling stories about how clients or customers have seen success with it uh, versus, you know, just vomiting down a list of technical requirements or goodness. Um, so I just say that like, that's, that's a very hot thing that we're seeing now uh, in terms of where a lot of the stories that uh, are coming in are, are either highly technical products that can't convey it to a buyer, help us sell this. And we're, I'm just telling you, our go-to is using stories. Um, you know, or certain it's, or it could be a very easy to understand product in a very crowded space, like a lot of these consumer plays. Like I did the, the example I mentioned earlier about uh, Little Nugget. There are a lot of apps that you know store baby photos. What has really helped the, that particular founder is her story cuts through the noise uh, and and captures people at the heartstrings, and she's just done a phenomenal job. But uh, that's a great example of going to market is imperative to lean on stories. It's really going to differentiate you, uh, especially when a lot of the technology side is commoditized. Um, when, when it comes to, and, and, you know, we oftentimes define story more broadly than just that sort of user or customer story. But I think in this case, we're going to lean into when you say story, you're, 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 specifically talking about someone's life being changed in light of a product or service and really telling that sort of on a personal level, right? Which I love. Yeah. Yeah. Let's dig into this a little bit. So I just wanted to define that quickly because I know when we say story, we do mean typically when we're talking about it here, we mean it um, to encompass all different types of stories from like the strategic narrative of a leader to uh, product descriptions that are really vivid or use metaphor in interesting ways. So, um, but yes, user stories and, uh, and of course, founder origin stories are also critical. I would love to hear, you know, what kinds of strategies are working when you, you know, which sort of, um, yeah, what could you could you bring some of this to life for us in terms of what kinds of user stories are you recommending to your clients? Which ones seem to be really resonating with different markets? Yeah, I would say I think a couple of them come to mind: narratives, emotions. Um, you know, I use a I use a I'm going to call this an innovation. We were probably the business process behind is more innovative than the actual product. But if you were to think about uh, you know a Casper mattress, for example, their go- the way they describe their product to get people to buy in is not by describing how great of a mattress it is, you know, in the springs and, and so forth, you know, they're, they're talking about telling the story of how it can be delivered to you and you're going to get in a better night's sleep. And, and this is kind of where I'm going where they're really tugging on emotion and, and, and using a narrative, um, you know, much more than a hard technical requirements or, or details. Um, yes. So and, true. And there, yeah. And I, I would say, you know, it's very important to narrative is one narrative is one where, we see people a lot of times be very effective um, when their audience is not familiar with the business domain. Uh, I'll give a couple of examples that comes into play. You know, uh, a lot of like startup ideas see a problem in their market. It could be, hey, I'm a surgeon in healthcare, and there's this pain that we have in our world, and here's the idea I have for it. Uh, well, not everybody is in the operating room with that surgeon and understands that, right? And so they can't immediately go to talking about the solution. If people aren't up to aren't familiar with that experience, right? And this is actually a real example of a client we had. And uh, you know, so when they they have, they're not going to get anyone to comprehend the idea if they don't first paint a picture, which is a great word that we'll often use to people to kind of draw out the narrative. Is like paint a picture to me of the problem that's going down versus you know, and that starts to add richness, texture, color, literally. Um, and uh, you know, that's that's going to help you know, narrow that gap to, um, conveying the innovation. Um, yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. No, that's a great example. Yeah. Um, I'd love to know too, what do you see as the ways of collecting these types of stories? I mean, that, that story you just shared is one, you know, of the innovator kind of digging deeper and and honing their craft of being able to visualize, uh, you know, the, the, the problem for others. And then when it comes to, you know, painting pictures of a product, changing someone's life and that sort of thing, yeah, I'd love to know, like, it, it seems like story collection is still a pretty manual process for a oh, lot of yeah. marketers and innovators. Yeah. And I, I'll just tell you my reaction for it. I'm very comfortable that it is manual. Um, and, and, you know, when I think about, you know, story collection, and this is a, this is a very prominent takeaway. Um, it's much more qualitative research than quantitative. You know, you, to get these stories, you're not you're not sending surveys. The questions you're not you're trying to answer at this point are how often and how many. Uh, that has its place in time, probably later, as you're maybe trying to validate. Um, it's conversations. You know, it's it could be open ended conversations. We find a lot of the gold, if you will, can be had with um, conversations with you know as, as your as your story collecting. It could be potential users. It could be potential stakeholders. It could be rounding out, but just asking them, you know. You know, tell me about this workflow or a lot of open-ended questions. What are some of your unmet needs? Uh, imagine a world if, that kind of stuff. Um, so a lot of the story collecting, I would say, is in conversations with open-ended prompts. Um, yes. Really workflow-minded. I'll just be honest. Um, it's We're not, you know, I, th- I think if you can kind of get at the heart of the way it is and jobs to be done, and, and through a conversation, you're going to kind of really start to understand unmet needs and a, you know, desired state. And a lot to me, a lot of innovation comes from unmet needs and desired state. Because if they were met and existed today, it probably would reflect the product of today. So when we're talking about innovation, we're talking about technology or products that are really coming to market to meet a need that is unmet. And I, I think it's fine. I find it, we find it at least much more powerful to get at those unmet needs by having a user tell us about how they're doing something right now or a way that they wish they were doing something, um, you know, and that's, that's not going to be done in a, you know, highly automated fashion. So a, a lot of the manual qualitative conversation is, is where we get a lot of the gold. Um, and, you know, I, I'm not saying, you know, quantitative research has tremendous, tremendous value at different points, uh, depending on your, on your research goal. But if you're in the story collecting phase, I'm extremely comfortable with, um, you know, the, the conversations and the manual, um, you know, you know, ways to get at that. Yeah. So it's kind of like that the process makes the, the results worthwhile. Yeah. As a qualitative researcher, my heart is singing at what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and I, and I'm still also fascinated by, you know, how we scale up story collection better and, and do it in a way where insights are getting pooled. And, um, and so anyhow, that's, just, that's another, uh, Research yes, area of yep. inquiry for sure. Well, I would love, this has been an incredible conversation, Mike. I'm so grateful that you made time to be on the podcast. Would you like to leave us with any additional advice? Yeah, I would say what we, I mean, at the end of the day, what we're starting to see is the best innovation. And this is certainly rooted in design thinking, but it's, it's outside in. Uh, it's not inside out. It's the more that you can understand. I mean, if you think about what's the right approach to the product, uh, you know, understanding that it, that 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 the story is to be solved, the research will get at that. That's going to influence the right approach to the product, and then that then I would recommend yet again an outside in approach to how you go to market. Uh, it isn't just about telling the world what you've built. Uh, you'll be more effective if you understand why someone buy it, the pain that they feel, and and crafting your go to market messaging in that way as well. So definitely. Um, Outside in is maybe the 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 kind of leading uh, thought I'd love to, to to share with the audience. I love that, and it applies to everything we discussed from the early ideation phase all the way through to the marketing launch of the product. So, um, I, I, lo- I love that we ended on that note. Mike, where can our listeners follow and find you out in the the internet world? <laughs> it, it, it's great. So, uh, uh, two two things come to mind. I'm uh, I'm probably most active on LinkedIn uh, myself personally, Mike Reynolds, as well as Innovate Map, the company. Uh, we're very active with uh, you know content. Uh, we also have a thought leadership platform as well. It's our Better Product Podcast. So if uh, 
you know, you want to follow just general thought leadership around digital products, uh, it, it would be under better product. Uh, we've got podcasts, we've got blogs and a series of uh, content related to that. And that's probably the best way to follow us. So thank you for asking, Katie. Absolutely. Definitely check out their podcast. And I am excited to listen into it myself as well. And Mike, thank you so much for being here. Um, and I will talk to you really soon. Sounds great. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this week's episode. Be sure to follow us on social media and add your voice to the conversation. You can find us at Untold Content. 